Since 2012, thanks to the hybrid engine, energy is retrieved and then released. With the new 2014 regulations, the teams can have two hybrid systems per car. So, the manufacturers will have to make some hard choices. First of all, we're off to Toyota to see what's happening. En route! It's all very hush-hush in here. Mr. Oh. Kinoshita. <laughs> nice to meet you. Where are we exactly here? Where? Oh, where? Well, we are in the engine shop. Yes. Yeah. It's a place where you can test all the new yes. engine? Yes, yes. All, all the components include the transmissions, differential and hybrid system, everything. Yes. This is like a car. Okay. It's a secret place. Yeah, yeah. We can look everywhere. <sighs> Sorry, no. No, it's not, not possible. Very, very small. So just have some questions to ask okay. you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Tell us why it's so important for you to come back to racing with a hybrid engine. So you know the Toyota, we are the hybrid company. So our aim is we need to bring the kind of green technology into the racing field. Otherwise, uh, there is no connection between the racing and the production cars. What exactly is a racing hybrid engine? So our hybrid system is mainly the cars, kinetic energy recovery systems. So we will recover the energy from the braking and then use this energy during the accelerations. You've chosen double KERS systems. Two energy recovery mechanisms, one at the front and one at the rear. Why? We choose front and rear axles, two KERS systems, because our systems, which have been developed for eight years, was these two KERS systems. But uh, by the regulations, last year and the year before, we couldn't use the front because of only one. So, for us, this is not a new. For us, it's a back to our standard systems. And you achieve the equivalent of what? 1,000 bhp? How do you cope with 1,000 bhp? It's huge! We've got several aids. Traction control, for example, is something we can rely on. You mash the throttle on the exit from the corners and the system manages front and rear wheels. If there's going to be too much wheel spin, we drivers can decide. We've done all the development on the car to make it as smooth as possible to drive. It's true that with the two energy retrieval systems, the power released when you are accelerating is enormous. So you have to be able to dose that and then use the energy as intelligently as possible. So we worked on that throughout winter testing, but it still gives you one hell of a kick in the backside. We've just seen the solutions at Toyota Motorsport. Now, Pierre, what are the choices at Audi and Porsche? Each manufacturer has explored different technologies for his hybrid system. Porsche has chosen to feed an electric motor by retrieving the energy from the exhaust gases blown into the turbo. Audi, on the other hand, has opted for a tried and tested solution, the one used on the 2013 e-tron Quattro with a single energy retrieval system, the traditional Kurs, to save weight to compensate for the heavier diesel engine. Who will be proved right? Answer at the end of the Le Mans 24 hours. So there we have three major manufacturers with three different strategies concerning the choice of engines and retrieval systems. It has all the makings of a thrilling race. And how are the private teams going to compete in these conditions? This will be the subject of our next rendezvous.